way the authorization to conduct this meeting remotely through the zoom platform because of the covid emergency and everyone is in here so far there's someone else comes in yeah i gotta keep on that so um do we have any additions to the posted agenda at this time uh yes i have an addition okay i'd like to talk about the uh the town roadside uh, mowing the delivery blade in Greenhawk. Okay. And anyone else? Nope. Got everybody in here. All right. So um, we'll start with the uh, meeting minutes from the prior meeting of August 24th, which I read through and seemed to be. Um, pretty clear and right, so I'd move to approve those unless you guys have any corrections to them. I have read them and I second your motion. All right, all in favor? All right. All right. Okay. All right, we've got someone else coming into the room here. So, um, why don't we just start right off with I think we have a, a large contingency that are here that want to talk about the recent. Um, roadside mowing up at Hawk and it's um I understand that it's um was um I'd be surprised if it was a surprise that it was done but some people are, are upset by the extent to which it was done Norm do you want to speak to that yeah yeah I have a, a little uh, right up here um and, and yeah dude we've already briefly talked about this but yeah. uh, maybe I'll, I'll clue uh, other people in and um uh, it, it, you you've agreed with us to maybe meet a little bit later um, and come to some solutions for moving forward. But um, um, I also want to bring up that we we understand that the town has obligations to keep the roads clear, and uh, they work within a limited budget. So it is sort of a pickle. I mean, we understand what you guys are going through. Um, but we're we're, just, we're hoping we're we're here to hopefully find a better way. Um, many members uh, of Greyhawk were upset and and just heartbroken at the degree of destruction this year, um, and the amount of branches that were left on the road. Uh, and we were saddened about seeing certain types of trees hit, which include the pine trees. Uh, they're very uh, slow to grow, and they grow at the base. Um, they didn't really seem to be a threat to the road, um, but they were really just sheared off. They looked kind of funny. Uh, we had some apple trees that were hit, um, sort of older apple trees that uh, are very hard for them to uh, uh, grow back. Um, and we had some ash trees that were hit, and um, we have had uh, ash borer uh, problems in Great Hawk. We, we had a big problem with the ash borer a couple of years ago. Um, we're a smaller and dense community. Um, we have much uh, smaller lots by and large than a lot of Greyhawk, or than a lot of people from Rochester. You know, our, our lots are about 1.2 to 1.3 acres and our houses are very close to the road. So we see this, a lot of times we see the, the destruction right, right outside from our, from our uh, windows. So, um, we have a, a sensitivity to it. We have a lot of people that walk on these roads and the first thing they see are the roadside trees. Um, we see that, uh, actually we see that the town uh, takes into consideration these kind of factors um, with other neighborhoods that are a little more dense in Rochester. And we're just hoping that uh, Rochester or that Greyhawk can be included in that group of, of more dense neighborhoods that the rotor blade, the rotary blade doesn't hit quite as harshly. Uh, Greyhawk spends a lot of money uh, every year um, taking care of our roadsides. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but each year, you know, when the fallen trees fall over the winter, a lot of times they're, they're quickly shoved to the gutters or the washouts. We uh, hire contractors every year to to cut up those fallen trees and, and put them further into the woods. Um, we have uh, um, 
chip offs uh, for our homeowners where they take branches and uh, um, you know line them up by the side of the road. Uh, we also cut uh, live trees quite a bit that are hanging over the road and, and do pro pose a threat you know to both the road and our uh, homeowners. Um, so, so on a lot of levels, we are actually kind of helping uh, the town um, we, 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 we take our roadsides seriously and we try to keep them tidy. Um, but uh, to live in, uh, in const year after year, like as you mentioned, um, yeah, this is a yearly thing where, where um, you know, certain trees get hit on certain years. Um, but there's a certain fear up here that, you know, oh my God, the blade's coming. Um, and, and we're just hoping that you know, so, somehow we we can get together and 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 collaborate and do better. Um, we're we're basically looking for for three things. Um, the, the first is is hopefully you guys can um, uh, clean our our gutters, our washouts. Um, uh, hopefully, pick them up, either pick it up or or uh, uh, chip it up. Um, ho hopefully, instead of blowing them up, because that's just going to blow. Um, branches into our yards, and uh, we'll just have to. Our homeowners will just have to pick them up for the next chip off. So um, we're, we're hoping for that as number one. Um, number two, again, I hope we can collaborate um, doing it. It would be great if we could meet, if our board could meet with you and just strategize, just come up with some sort of way where we, we can meet halfway or how we can get our ideas together to uh, uh, mitigate this problem so it, it just doesn't happen again. Again, we're, we're keenly aware that you have limited funds to work with, limited resources, um, but maybe, you know, given our resources, uh, we can help you out where needed. Um, and thirdly, uh, we, we'd like uh, the select board to consider Rochester as a whole. Um, to, to consider fit, phasing this this uh, form of uh, uh, of cutting trees, um, we we got to find ways to just not do that anymore. Um, I, I feel uh, a lot of us feel that uh, you know the beauty and the nature of Rochester is its greatest asset. It is it's it's probably number one. That's why people are here, and and then to see something come by and, and just just hack up trees like that is incredibly disappointing to a lot of people um so we we, we want we, we we just want hopefully you guys can consider you know this in the future i know it takes time to figure these things out uh but let's look for alternative methods let's look for other resources to maybe get the job done in another way. You know, it's, it's a long-term idea, but uh, we should start now. Um, there's just no reason to look at broken trees. Um, so um, uh, we're, I'm, I'm just thinking the long-term Rochester as a whole. I know other towns have stopped doing it because of an outcry from uh, the townspeople. So. Um, I think we should start thinking in this direction as well. Thank you. All right. Does anyone else want to um, make a plea on, on this behalf? Or, um, um, so I guess in in response, the the idea of stopping cutting is is pretty much a, a non-starter. Um, I mean, is it really is is I agree with you that the the local natural beauty is why a lot of people live here but the safety of not only the residents up there i'm just going to take this call in case there's someone that can't get onto the meeting just to make sure it's like are you looking to get into the zoom meeting okay then um i'll see you tomorrow then i'll be around what time Okay, we'll see you. Thank you.
Yeah, we um, had some people having trouble getting into Zoom, so I'd go over if I don't see the caller ID. That um, so, as I was saying, the the safety is is um, is the number one priority. Uh, why this is happening? I know it's very. Yeah, I never suggested the stock cutting. But. Well, you did say that, um, yeah. and I, I mean uh, that kind of cutting. But if if we had gone up there to cut individual trees and branches, we could have spent three months um, versus three days doing that. And and well, I, don't know I know that it looks good. it looks harsh, and I and and I, I would beg you to not feel. Um, singled out that Hawk is getting a more brutal treatment than the rest of town because uh, um, three weeks ago we were getting the same calls from up in the North Hollow and I remember driving up through there and it was very obvious where that was done and already three weeks later it's hard to see where that happened. Now I know it's, it's I, and I agree, I, I drove through there the other day and it's very, 90% of the area it's hard to see what was trimmed. And then there are some definitely glaring, brutalized trees and branches. Um, and I would, I would incur. There's one dangler up there that is just um, is too high. He could not get the rest of that off. But the reason he could reach it in the first place was because it was hanging down over the road. And when you drive in a car, it may seem like it's totally clear. But when you're in a plow truck, another six feet in the air. And with the snow bringing these branches down, it's um, it's it's downright dangerous. Not to mention cutting the branches. So it's it's I totally feel for the you know I'm a tree hugger. I'll admit it. You know um, I think that the thought that we can work together in terms of mitigating the intensity of the impact is I mean you had mentioned in our conversation before that maybe we would not mow and then Hawk could do the mowing up there, but I, I think that more of a hybrid is like when we have to do a mow like this and then then property owners can go and, and team up or, or whether they clip off the badly damaged things or, or what have you. It's um it's 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 a hard, but you know, it's um it's <clears throat> in terms of cleaning out the the branches they did follow with the chipper and get all the bigger pieces as they went. And the rest of the branches that are out there, and I, I talked with Cooter yesterday and he's planning after the leaves are off, they generally go with the blower and clean out the ditches so they can drain properly. And that's his plan is to is the deal blower, with, them, with the They're blower. gonna blow branches back into our yards? Into the yards and into the woods, yeah. That's... yeah. That's probably not what we prefer. No, that's not what you would like. But you live in the woods, you know. There's, 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 it's. I mean, I live on Route 100, and the amount of snow that I have to take off my front porch that the snow plows dump on it is, you know, I'd, I'd rather they didn't. Do that. We all do. It's a fact of life, you know. We're talking about the trees. Yeah. Um, uh, what, uh, the, the, why, I don't, uh, we don't understand why the chipper behind it didn't chip more thoroughly. I mean, the chipper was there. You had you had work crew there. Um, it, it, it's like they did half of the job, um, and, and then it, it becomes more. It, it becomes more of expenditure to the town to come back and blow it uh, out, and then it becomes more of an expenditure to Greyhawk. That, that's that's something, something that's, something that's already going to happen. That's already on the schedule. It's not an additional expenditure to the town to come and blow it because that's part of the the winter maintenance. But mm -hmm. um, the the one of the reasons that this seems so intense this year is this year we hired uh, a machine and the town crew did it themselves as opposed to um, hiring an outside contractor to do it. That which basically gets paid by the mile and what we discovered in doing it this year that the these contractors were doing a quick job and, and, a, and a minimal job and there was a lot of catch up in terms of you know beating stuff back so it was it was definitely a more of a dramatic I, I wouldn't think that it's to be yeah, so intense yeah. every year you know uh, it's um uh, i thought last year they did a great job i, I was i talked with them um 
I didn't feel that there were immediate threats of branches hanging over the tree, hanging over the street, ready to whack somebody. Um, and, and I felt a lot of these trees were way deep in the woods. And they, he really got in, it, it was sort of arbitrarily selected which trees and where he wanted to go. Um, and it, it, was, it was harsh and didn't need to be. There were, there were areas that just weren't, it, it, they weren't threats. Um, and and I would, it, what I would like is, is maybe we could talk, we could go up and down these roads and say, you know, well, look at that tree. That, that tree is going to be a threat in three years. What do we do about it? Um, um, I think that would be part of the collaboration where we can go through this stuff and, and really be selective and, and see where the threats are as far as what is going to grow and get in people's way when they drive. Um, I, I didn't see anything be, beforehand. That right. Was but you're point. also driving in a, in a car and not a, not a, a, you know, a five ton plow truck. So it's, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's still, no, I can see like the edge of the road and I look up and how far it can go. It's, it's pretty clear. And then those, those plow trucks, the blades out there on the edge, it's not the person. The plow trucks are 12 feet high. Um, I, I would like to know what the parameters are. Is it 16 feet on each side? Um, do we know how high? Um, you're talking about high or the, the right, right away, the town right away. If we actually, clear the town right away it would be a much more dramatic imposing um trimming exactly that's why we're scared to death <laughs> well we are scared out of our minds uh you know you know if we say something wrong or you know i i really um mm. um beg you to to let go of the the thought that there's some vengeance happening here for the road trimming i mean it's really there this is the guy that's going to be plowing your roads in the winter and, and, you know, getting the phone calls in the middle of the night that there's a tree down. It's really his intent was to, to um, make that, make that possible and doable this winter. You know, it's, um, Pat, you had well, something you were going to say? I was, up, I was up in Great Hawk. Um, I think I saw uh, Norm out walking the roads last week. I am in Great Hawk at least twice every week um, doing home inspections. And during the winter, I get to ride with the snowplow guy. Um, he doesn't have a truck as large as the town does, but um, the visibility and the, the ice storm possibilities um, are very real up there. And um, when you're sliding towards the side of the road, the last thing you want to worry about is having a tree slap your windshield. Um, I just kind of look at what happened. I, I wasn't as, as, as shocked because I had seen the trimming done in other parts of the town. So I knew what I was looking for. Um, I, I really just compare it to getting a, a crew cut because the hair is just out of control. So you just need to start over, push it back. Um, and uh, I, crew cut, they cut cleanly. This is not clean. Fl flame branches is is not clean. It, it's, and we just can't go all the way back and start cutting trees. It's better to cut branches than it is to cut the entire tree. So what we're trying to do is 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 save trees that are growing into they're, they're growing towards daylight, and that's where the road is. So uh, other trees are pushing the branches of the the trees on the side of the road into the road. <laughs> <laughs> so, so could we hire uh, our own contractors to cut some of these these branches hanging over the road? I'm sure, sure, and I would I'd be um, sure that we could get Cooter to, you know, ride with them and and point out things that needed that you know that needed to be done. I mean, any. You know, there's no no interest here in in making the world less beautiful up there. There really is is not. It's just really, you know, about you know about the practicality and the safety. And it's and it's and it's not um, 
it's not a one-time thing. As Pat pointed out, the trees are growing towards the light and the opening in the road, and it just naturally, oh, yeah, it's a naturally happens. I know. You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I like what you said, where, where, where Cooter could be in the truck with a contractor, and, and we could go down the roads and, and locate the problem areas, and maybe we could have our own guy cut selected areas. Maybe Cooter could cut other areas. Um, but if, if we can come up with a plan, you know, maybe each time around this year, um, we, we, we just arrange for a little drive-by and, and we come up with just a, a little bit of a plan, a little more, you know, thoughtfulness and planning ahead. And I, I think we can keep everybody happy. And, you know, we, we, we could do some work where it would keep your workload lower and, and you guys can go on to other stuff. Um, um, again, if we can kind of collaborate, we, we can keep, uh, everybody can be happy if, if it's done right. And I think what you mentioned is the first move. Yeah. Um, so, so could we meet and talk further about this? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Yeah. yeah. All right, great. I'll, uh, I'll contact you. Okay. Can I say a word or two? Yeah. Ken Yellen. I don't think anybody's arguing with the fact that it needs to be cut back. I hear Pat, I hear Doom, that it's necessary. I think it's really just the method, the way the trees and the branches are just pretty much butchered. I don't think there's an arborist on this earth that would think that's a good way to treat vegetation and growth if you were concerned about the health of the tree. So I think it's just not the question that it's cut, it's the question of how it's cut. Mm. It seems as though the only solution is to have those of us up at Hawk perhaps not to speak for Norm, but to, to incur some of the funding to do some of the cutting in a more uh, kinder way and still get the result the town wants. And at the same time, not to have, frankly, the, the ugliness that's created by this uh, cutting blade that just basically butchers yeah. the branches. That's all. I think if we could do it neatly, I don't think there's a problem with cutting it back. You agree, Norm? Yeah, yeah, that uh, was well said. Uh, better. I was trying to say the same thing. I guess you no, said. No, you did. You did. <laughs> you did. I was just hearing Pat and doing it. It's clear that it has to be cut. Yeah. We just want to yeah, do it. Yeah, it's, uh, well, I understand. We all understand it has to be cut. This is sure. Vermont, and things go like crazy. Yeah. Okay. No, I think well, that it's the collaboration uh, would be the key, and and to um, and to get on that, you know mid-summer you know so we can plan ahead before the the fall comes and the and the, you know the trimming so it's i'd be um Great. I'll, I'll i'd be happy to meet with you and and you know like i said i did tour the place and and look and it's you know definitely some scars up there but it's um i will um stress that you know within a month there will be much less apparent mm -hmm. but that doesn't i but it is des definitely not the best for the health of a tree to have a branch shattered off versus cut off. So mm -hmm. and you're, you're, that's absolutely true. It's just a matter of uh, the necessity and the practicality of how, how to get it done. So it's, yeah. it's good to have this conversation and, and, and maybe we can have a more um, um, teamwork attack on it. Well, it may be, as you say, an overwhelming job to try to do it ourselves and pay someone. But right now we're, we're going to, Put a little of our money where our mouth is and actually this coming weekend a bunch of us are going to get together and try to repair the cuts by doing cleaner cuts behind the yeah. mangled end so yeah. yeah we may find and agree we're agreeing with you that it's just a much bigger job than we can handle but i think we're willing to try yeah well i'm going to have to do some of that on my property that is not facing route 100 that got the same treatment from the same truck so there you go i've got some trees to clean up also but yeah What's up? I will tell you that anytime you cut any brush like that, you get a magnitude of more brush. It just comes in heavier and thicker. <laughs> um, in my experiences on the power lines and cutting brush in there, doesn't matter what you do, it's going to grow back quicker and thicker. So whatever you do, you're going to have to keep doing it. So, right. And so maybe with some of what we've done up there, it may look terrible at this point and if we go back through as a group and clean it up a little bit 
I think we're going to still have to use a rotary down the road because you're going to get the fine stuff that the simple mower isn't going to take care of. <clears throat> and you're going to have to continue to do some sort of it. Yeah. I don't know what the extent of that will be, but I think you will have to do some. Well, am I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the biggest um, shock here is, is some of the higher branches. Is that correct? It's not so much the, the lower brushy stuff that is in a fence as much as the, the larger branches that got smashed back. Is that correct? Um, it, it's a case by case basis. Um, yeah. So some of the higher stuff was a little, we kind of, uh, there, there was some deeper stuff. So some of that was a little, little bit deeper. And, and then again, the types of trees, I, I, I I know that certain trees encroach more than other trees. Um, it, you know, it's, it's, almost, it's almost like a, you have to go on a tree by tree and case by case basis. And, and I know, I guess when you're, you're in the middle of the road actually doing this, that it's hard to make those assessments constantly. Um, but, you yeah. know, when, when we reassess it and look at it, we, we start wondering, you know, why did he do this? Why did he do that? And, and, and there was no clear pattern as to how high or the brush, you know, uh, down at the... Uh, well, it's hard to see what the pattern is now because the branches that were there um, tracking his attention to cut back are now not there. So it's a little tricky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that way we can't gauge yeah. the stuff. But the, the, of course, the high stuff is the hardest to repair. Right. I get a long pulse all up there, but... Um, yeah, we're, we're just trying to, you know, we're looking towards the future and, and hope, you know, especially that high stuff, especially could, could be something we could target where we could, you know, if we got to take a high branch down, we'll, we'll cut that cleanly. Um, you know, and that, that way you'll know, look decent for the next 30 years, you know, uh, that, that's, that is an area that you, you see over a long period of time. Some of that lower stuff, the brushy stuff, the heavy, thick stuff does, tend to grow back quicker and cover up the existing carnage. But there are certain high branches that'll be visible for years to come. So um, that's my take on it. <laughs> we'll talk. Okay. okay. Does anyone else have anything you. they'd like to say about this? All right. uh, yes, Doom. This is Jamin Benson up at Hawk. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to just say uh, uh, I'm a little concerned on the overextended reach of the machine. Um, I think the town went some places too far beyond their right of way. And a lot of the people feel kind of like their private property was violated. Um, and they're upset about that. And they're left with the exploded tree shoot stumps that are left. Um, to be honest with you, it looks like something that you see that the railroad does when you ride Amtrak. They just kind of pulverize and destroy everything along the railroad tracks. And the aesthetics uh, really did hurt the look of Hawk. And it's going to take years for these heart scars to heal on some of these trees. Um, my biggest concern is all of the brush in the hitches uh, is going to plug up the culvert pipes. And we may have another rerun of Lower Maple Hill up here if we get a heavy quick saw and we're going to start losing roads and stuff. So I'm not sure how good that blowing machine is going to work, blowing the stuff out of the heavy grass ditches because they really didn't cut the grass here back the way they should because they concentrated on the machines. And, uh, you know, if we can pull this brush out of these ditches to try and save our culverts from plugging up, that's great. But to ask people to throw the stuff up into their yards, uh, it may not work out right. I thought we could pile it up in decent piles and you guys could come back and chip it up uh, if we yeah. accumulate it in, in piles. You know, all the, the real big pieces that are easily chippable, or they, they took care of that. And the, I noticed that you pulled some brush into the road, which is not the thing to do. Um, it's the as they come and blow those ditches clean after the leaves come down of course if there's obviously some big branches that don't want to budge out of there i believe they're going to pull those out so i'm I, I i i'm you know the main focus in the late fall is to make sure those ditches are clean so i don't think that this 
this trimming is going to, you know, compromise that. Well, I, I think you should come up and take a closer look with, a, with us on foot and see what's going on. And as far as the brush that is out on the edge of the ditch of the road, that was actually laying in the ditch. And um, I was a little upset. Um, I followed the town's recommendation. If you did not want anything cut in front of your property to put out no cut signs. And I had my signs out clearly a month ahead of this. And I was not here when the brush cutting was happening. Otherwise, I would have went out and, and, and asked them not to. And they cut me anyways. They didn't do me bad, but they cut me. And I, I thought that was a little bit disrespectful. I thought we were kind of working together on the problems that we have with Austin Hill and the road. And for that to happen, uh, it was upsetting. So that's why the brush is out of the ditch and on the side of the road, because I was hoping you guys were going to come back and clean up your mess. Because we do a pretty good job up here at Hawk cleaning up our own messes. Who's that? Um, just to go over the policy of a, of a no cut, uh, like a, can a Rochester resident declare their frontage a no cut zone? And how does that work? Does that include trees or no or what? <laughs> you can request not to get mowed, but you know, doing a wholesale don't mow hawk, I don't think is going to cut it. You know, it's um, no pun intended. Um, yeah. The, um, but but you, you can't give do a request to cut any type of trees or. Well, it, it, the the type of tree is 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 irrelevant to the 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 fact of it encroaching in on the road. You know that's that's the main thing. It's not the type of tree. Um, um, actually, it was interesting. Cooter mentioned he was surprised that he noticed how many oak trees. He, he noticed there's a lot of oak trees and um, moving into the area. But yeah, there's a lot of little saplings right on the road. That... Yeah, right. And um, mm. and it's it's unfortunately that's that's the nature of of road maintenance. It's, it, you gotta you gotta clear that. You know. So um, mm. anyway, I'll I'll um, set a time when I come up and 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 chat with you, Norman, whoever else wants to join in on that and, and walk around. Like I said, I did drive around and, and inspect the place, but um, we'll, um, I guess we'll, um, well, well, thank you. Thank you for listening. Yeah, and, sure. And I, know it's, uh, I know it's hard work for the for a road commissioner to keep track of uh, 60 miles of road. Yeah, well, next thing you know, we'll be talking about snow plowing. Oh, yeah, yeah, we haven't, yeah. Uh, not yeah. <laughs> it's so hard to be the president of an association, too. <laughs> right. Um, all right. Well, thank you all from up on the mountain for joining us. At least you didn't have to drive downtown. Yeah, yeah, yeah kind of nice. We're up here um, just like hawks in our nest. Yes. <laughs> all right. All right. Good night. Well, take care. Yep. Uh, you don't have to leave just because you're done talking, but you know. You know. Yeah. Uh, got anything interesting else to say? <laughs> oh, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Find out. Our next guest is um, Robert. Um, Robert Merritt, you're on the. You're up. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, actually, the the uh, primary purpose for my request was to the my last interaction with Jamie from the supervisory union was that. Uh, he indicated to me I had to get permission from the select board to get access. I believe you've already taken care of that. Yeah. Noon, yeah. And um, I've heard back that they're they're looking for dates and such. I think we're we uh, other members of the um, of the uh, repurposing meeting. I think we've sent out to the board um, a, um, a summary of all our activity to keep you in the loop. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, Vic, uh, Vic or Catherine, do you want to um, uh, uh, speak to those those reports? Sure. Uh, let me start. And in, in as Robert said, there, Catherine, and a few other folks who've been working on this project are also present. They may want to chime in with other com comments. So um, I've been chairing these meetings, and I just wanted to uh, take uh, some time to bring the select board up to date and, and also pose a pose a, a request. Um, you might recall back in February, we had a community Envision Rochester meeting where we looked at a number, we, people who attended this 
meeting, it looked at a number of potential projects for community development. Uh, one of them that emerged was uh, repurposing the uh, uh, vacant high school building. And uh, we had gotten to the point of uh, a blessing, if you will, from the, both the select board and the school board for this volunteer group to develop ideas and, and come back with recommendations. And uh, just about that time, the the pandemic hit, and uh, we and we paused and went on to other, other priorities. And uh, but then back in early June, I think it was, we reconstituted uh, some additional people uh, joined our group, and we we got going again and began developing a, a list of ideas to explore for what might be the uh, a good future for that that building and. Uh, if you have had a chance to read through the, uh, the uh, update report, you would have seen that uh, a number of ideas have, have begun to, to be explored, ranging from an arts and learning center to uh, maker space to uh, housing. Uh, uh, some things we've looked into further than others, and uh, there are other items on the list we want to get to uh, yet. So there's been a lot of enthusiasm and uh, activity uh, to date. Uh, but we've also come to uh, a point where we want to check in with both the school board and the select board around uh, what's, what's your level of commitment to um, uh, this kind of development of this building. Uh, with, with the school board, uh, the school board has not yet made a definitive decision about uh, what this building plan is going to be. And in fact, uh, you might have seen a uh, questionnaire that was sent out on Front Porch Forum last week. Uh, asking some very fundamental and very important questions like, should the merger continue? And should we keep the high school? And should we keep the elementary school? And, uh, you know, really fundamental, important questions, though, uh, you know, we'd, we'd wish that those had been addressed earlier, but we are where we are. So we have some concern about that uncertainty. Um, on the select board side, you know, we, we view this high school building uh, if indeed it does come to pass that it, it's uh, available for repurposing as a really unique and valuable asset to the community. And uh, we'd hate to see it either torn down or, or left and abandoned like the, uh, the Weyerhaeuser building in Hancock uh, or you know, sold off to you know, who knows who for some purpose that may or may not be in the best interest of the community. So we're, we're looking for uh, any kind of uh, indication of intent by the select board that you might be able to make about acquiring that building for the town, uh, recognize that we, you know, nobody knows yet what the best purpose is yet. Uh, it's a work in progress, but we'd we'd sure love to hear what your thoughts are about that, and uh, you know, question what questions do you have, and and finally, you know, how might our three organizations, the the this committee of volunteers working repurposing the school board and the select board, how can we work in closer collaboration? Uh, because it really takes input, I think, from all three parties uh, working in a coordinated fashion to get, get the best result in, in a timely way. So let me stop there and see if anybody else, Catherine or Robert or Jeff or Robert, has anything to add what I've said. Well, um, thank you, Vic. Um, the one thing that I would add is that, uh, yes, we are looking for a commitment, um, and, but what we also want are the steps that the select board feels uh, need to, to be um, in place before acquisition. So that would give us um, sort of the objectives towards the goal. So yes, we have an intent to acquire the building, but before that acquisition can take place, A, B, C, we need to see A, B, C, that kind of thing. Because the group has been working diligently as the report indicates, uh, but they feel right now that they're working on less firm ground without a stronger uh, commitment from both boards. And uh, we don't want to dampen the enthusiasm of the members. We want to keep with this work. But the, at our last meeting, you know, the group in large basically said, we need these boards to work with us in partnership and to indicate the level of commitment for what we're doing. Okay. Well, uh, go ahead, Robert. Uh, I just want to also add that we are aware, fully aware that the once acquired, that the town won't have a lot of money to 
to devote to this oh. project. Um, we will have to come up with alternative um, <laughs> sources and be very inventive. Um, and that, that certainly is on our mind. So uh, in, in all of this, since a couple of our members are members of the, uh, the budget finance committee. So, um, uh, so I just wanted to mention that and that's, we assume that's going to be part of the criteria yeah. that you will um, for for accepting the building is having a plan of how how this is going to be financed here to here in the building upkeep well it, it seems that um i know we gave our blessing and encouragement to explore the situation and explore the options um in terms of asking us for a definite yes we want to buy the building i don't think we're ready to say that yet i think that we're still really um there's so many unknowns out there um like even i'm looking at the third paragraph in the introduction about rochester's slowly shrinking population um i'm not sure that's going to be continued to be the case and and i you know we're in two two and a half years into this five year cooling off period and it seems that and i know that we want to be prepared if something's going to happen and not have five years is up and oh we now we need to start thinking about it this this all this work is critical and and much appreciated but i'm really curious how this whole evolution of our society here in relation to the outside world is going to relate i'm not i'm not convinced that we don't need to flip the the bubble and and use the high school as a school and 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 repurpose the smaller building. Um, it's just it's um, you know I, I'm not sure if if well I don't I I don't think we can say yes we want to buy that building right now. Well, if you look at the entire school campus, there are two buildings and there's land associated with it. Right. So even in the scenario that you reference, the possibility of the high school becoming the elementary school, that is obviously part of the conversation where you'd be potentially repurposing the other building. But we need to have the conversation. And you know, we can start right now applying for feasibility grant money, which is the logical next step, really. Mm -hmm. But you know, on what ground will this committee have it if we don't have a, a more or less firm understanding that, the, that there is intent for town acquisition? You know, and yes, the feasibility study will delve into a lot of things. There are grants out there. You know this, and we're prepared to pull all those pieces together. But you know, we need to know how where you stand with this and what it is that you need to see before that dollar purchasing of the school takes place of, of one of the two buildings. And and the conversation really needs to happen with the school board. And we just want to be, you know, in the conversation. We want transparency about what's going on. And, uh, you know, otherwise we, we're feeling right. marginal. Oh. Like we're out there, you know, spinning our wheels and we don't want to do that. Yeah. So I one of the concerns I have simply is uh, somebody striking a match to the project and then just passing it off. And I think that's something that's of concern. It's going to take a, a monstrous effort to bring this through. And I'm, I'm just unsure of how the rest of the community feels about the whole thing. I'm not sure we've uh, got enough input from the whole community um, because it is Rochester that would be responsible for that. And that is a financial bear bearing that we just can't do. I mean, I don't believe as a, as a community, I mean, if we were a high school and it was associated with the school, that's a whole different process. And also the high school building to me, once we stop using it, it's considered not a school anymore. I'm not sure what the ramifications are of that, of reopening it as any other thing but a project of some other concern and that's one of my biggest concerns to the whole thing um and i guess i've told you catherine in the past how i felt about the whole issue and 
And I would really, really like to think that we have this five-year merger with Stockbridge, whether we like it or not. And I think we need to see that through. And just, I'm not sure what our, you know, what wheels we need to have in motion for this, uh, but I think we need a, we have a five-year commitment there. And I think we have to see that through before we make any sort of decisions about that. But I do think we need more input from more of the community. Well, I, I would agree with the input from the community. I think it's important to, to uh, get a, a sense of the community. I was disappointed to learn that only 29 of those surveys have been completed and returned to the school board, which is kind of shocking to me. They were passed out hard copy at the polls and there was an electronic link uh, on front page forum. And I guess the September 4th deadline has been extended, but where is the community you know, involvement in just even taking a survey? Uh, I had the, um, the sort of serendipity to run into Ethan uh, on Labor Day walking around the school. He was you know, uh, hammering uh, tent posts into those tents. And he basically said that the school, board, the school board has already hired a surveyor. They are serious. They are going ahead with the idea that the property will be divided. Where are we? Are we even in that conversation, Frank? Because we need to be in the conversation and it needs to be active, not just about being a, you know, fearful, but about literally keeping the lines of communication open and talking through every single If you drive issue. by there during the day now, Catherine, um, you'll notice the parking lot is full at the high school. And if we subdivide that property, and I'm not sure what the what the road frontage is there anymore. I'm not even sure we have enough road frontage for subdividing that property anymore, for that type of use. But these are and all if things we to figure out. That property, you're going to take up both parking lots on one thing. Yeah, I, I think I think yeah, we're so early on the process. I know we are. It, it's it's it's. Yeah. We don't want to jump to conclusions, you know, one way or the other. I think all we've all we've done so far is really just sort of put our toes in the water to see what kinds of ideas are out there, develop them a bit. But there's a whole lot more work that needs to be done to figure out what makes sense, both economically as well as as a good fit for the community and good fit for one building or the other as the neighbor to that building. And uh, you know, financial feasibility has to be done. Uh, We've uh, indicated in the report that we, we do want to uh, involve a lot more community input in terms of program planning for you know, what might become of that building. And all that, all that is, is yet to come. But you know, what, what we're concerned about right now is just the uncertainty of where this um, availability of building is. And, and maybe it's, it's really it's more of a school board issue right now. And the school board has to decide what buildings to keep and maybe both of them at the end, who knows, maybe one or the other, maybe it's the elementary school that's available and, and surplus, and maybe it's not the high school. Uh, so that to me is the more fundamental question is, you know, what's the availability? The school board, the school board wants the select board involved. Amy has said, Amy said to us at our last meeting, the school board wants us to work much more closely with the select board and Jamie, when he gave, you know, responded to Dune's email today, also said, Dune, would you please come to our next meeting? They want us to work together. That's my strong impression. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's our select board that, you know, fully knows what, you know, the risks are, but we have to explore the risks. That's the whole point. We can't just say we're going to wait to explore the risks. We have to explore the whole potential now and yeah. then come to a place where we're presenting it to the town with so the town can have some you know hard facts and and answers okay i have met with the school board um a couple few times now um there are 13 points that um i discussed and proposed to them of all different types of issues that need to be addressed before we can even start the conversation about transferring either of the buildings um, most importantly, the subdivision, uh, underground fuel tanks and the underground tanks, um, state wastewater permits. Um, there's a lot of very important things that need to be worked out. In addition to how 
on earth are you going to divvy up the parking lot? And whose responsibility will it be for the school buses to go through the town? We're talking about two separate mm -hmm. So out of those 13 uh, different points that I've made, we've only actually got answers from about four or five of them. The others are being explored by the, so the school board right now. If you're saying that they are talking to a surveyor, they are working on those other 10 points that we brought up. Um, they need to do their due diligence. They are the seller and we the buyer. So they have to present us with a marketable title, a subdivision, um, flood, flood zones need to be addressed. All of these things have already been discussed in a couple previous meetings with the school board. So the ball is kind of in their court right now. And I, I don't want anyone to think that we are not addressing the needs. We're doing our due diligence in a slow, methodical fashion, both the school board, the SU, and the select board. And uh, it, it is proceeding. Yeah. Um, the, the questionnaire that went out um, that I saw on Front Porch Forum um, was, was kind of concerning for me. Um, and, and it almost made me want to take pause with what was going on. Like, should we continue with the merger? Um, there are some pretty deep seated things going on there that I was like, whoa, you know, uh, we're, we may not all be on the same highway, let alone even okay. going in the same. We, we had the same reaction, Patty. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, the, your committee is charged with working for us, the select board, um, but, but keep the faith, the select board is in conversations with both the SU and the school board um, about how we need to proceed to go forward, and Bonnie Bourne as well. Yeah, um, yeah and, we, Bonnie, and Bonnie is on our committee too. So, but you know, he, you bring up a great point. This is good news. I wish that this information had actually, we had been included in this loop of information. It would have been very informative to us to know that the select board has actually even put out the 13 points. We never heard about these 13 points. And it, it's great and, and makes logical sense, but until just now, we had no clue. <laughs> um, and, that's, and that's what we mean by working in partnership and with transparency so that we all know what's going on. We need to be informed too. Could I, could I, oh, could I ask something? Just very briefly. It was in order to uh, discover all of the different options that we could do with the building after we acquired it. So um, yeah, I, I, I thought that was what you were charged with. Um, could I could I bring up two little things very quickly that concern me? Yeah. Um, one is, um, and I, I don't I haven't heard them discussed, so I don't know if the committee has discussed them or not. I haven't been to any of the committee meetings. One is the um, the auditorium space that is very valuable to the White River Valley players and also to the town because of as, as a spot to hold town meetings. What would happen with that? And also um, the skate space area it, is used a lot by people in town. And if if the building belonged to someone else, what would happen with that? Mm -hmm. So anyway, those are just two things that I was have been thinking about and wondering. Well, and, of course, uh, those are good things and what we've been thinking in terms of is town acquisition. So, and we've all, and we all regard that the auditorium space is, is beautiful just the way it is. And we would like to have the elementary school resume access to that next year, as well as the community for using that space. Uh, I sent you a PDF of our um, progress report, Martha, during this meeting so that you could refer to it. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. It was that and the, and the skate space thing, just wondering about, because I look down there all the time and see people using it, and I don't want that to, um, to, to be a problem in the future. You know, it, it's, it gets used in the winter and the summer. Well, yes. You know, and, and, and talk about community engagement, and I agree with, with what Frank said. It is essential. And one of the things that is very essential is that we have engagement with the younger generation. You know, one of the, we all rea realize that we're an aging town, but when you put all the energy that it will take to even pull this off, you want to make sure there is buy-in from the generation that will be carrying it on. So we're very aware of that. 
and we want to proceed with com community engagement. We've started focus groups, but we need to have more focus groups. We want to, we want to you know, engage a broad community support. It's hard to go forward with that with enthusiasm if we don't know, you know, where things stand. And um, right. it's a little dispiriting uh, to, uh, you know, recognize now that the school board is, has all these major questions yet to be answered, and we don't know when that's going to happen. Uh, in a couple in a couple instances, you know, we're not even 100% sure we can subdivide that property. Mm -hmm. uh, Know, and, and what are the repercussions if we do subdivide it? Because it's all sitting in a floodplain. So uh, would the high school building, you know, it has, it would then have limitations as what could take place. Um, mm -hmm. Affordable housing is really off. You don't put a pillow in a floodplain. So um, the, the, that all needs to be worked out. We're at a higher level than, you know, uh, we want to keep the auditorium or that. We, we're trying to discover if this property separation can, can take. Yeah, really, the we're, we're working on that level too, Patty. And we do have, um, we have uh, right now uh, just the beginning, but we have people representing different uh, skills and aspects, professional aspects. Dick uh, Robson is also on this committee. And we've certainly, and, and you've got the list of all the members. Um, yeah. Certainly we've addressed the, the floodplain and there were things after Irene that were, that could have been done that weren't done because I guess the insurance company didn't want to pay for it. But there are mitigation measures that could be taken with respect to that floodplain. Isn't this to some degree a little, uh, premature because if the merger with Stockbridge doesn't work or gets nixed, then the schools come back to Rochester anyway. Is that, am I wrong assuming uh, that? I don't think, I think that's that still would be the supervisory union, whether or not we're our relationship with Stockbridge carries forth. I don't, I don't think that the schools come back to down no, no I, I robert i, I believe that the only implication would be that uh we would um each be responsible for our own elementary school and and um very there, there's a very poss like possible likelihood that the um the Stockbridge school would be too considered too small to be supported by the state, in which case they would probably go choice, in which case we would possibly get an increase of, mm -hmm. of students. But we've examined that of what, what would happen in the scenario if we had to accept a no, quite a number of, of students from Stockbridge. And I, the strong feedback I get from the school board is they do not want to support to buildings. However, having access to some of it, such as, you know, the, the auditorium and such would be something that they might be, at least some of the board would be interested in. So, and that's always been on our mind that whatever we do, that we, uh, as, as a community want to share, share our resources with the school, mm. you know, to whatever extent that they, they need. So, can I make a point? Yeah. So uh, I, I'm very I'm gratified to hear the Patty's what Patty said that the work is that she's done, which sounds very smart to me. But what, what really impresses me is, is you have these different groups, the school board, the select board and the committee, and nobody's really in charge of anything. Uh, so people are burrowing off in their different directions. We didn't even know about Patty's effort, which is really important. Um, the, st the stock, the, the school board has their own political problems with Stockbridge, which may end up uh, uh, sinking the whole merger, which changes the whole game. So this is very, very complicated, and nobody's in charge of it. So um, I, my my immediate thought, hearing all this, is somebody needs to be in charge of this. Somebody needs to be in charge of channeling all this different information and different uh, uh, concerns that people have serious concerns. Uh, otherwise, they're all just flying around, bumping into each other. Um, and and I, to me, it's the select board ought to be in charge of this. But I, but it's not like the select board doesn't have anything else to do. Well, in terms of in charge, I mean, right now the property belongs to the school system, right? So 
it's I mean, in terms of official capacity, it's the two boards that are the main, mm -hmm. you know, the main negotiators, so to speak. And uh, well, that's not. I'm talking about somebody taking responsibility or seeing that certain tasks are done and the thing moves forward in an orderly way. Because now my feeling is we're all going, we're bumping into each other. There's a lot of confusion. I mean, why is a committee running off coming up with 17 different possibilities for this place if the floodplain and the political situation in, uh, in the school board is going to sink the thing anyway? It seems like there needs to be some kind of order process. You know? So we're in, in the problem-solving process. I think we're really in the information gathering age and I, and I one of the things I noticed in the summary that you sent us which is I think a good idea is to make sure at least monthly that these um, the the what the repurposing group and the select board you know we we meet like this and 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 have this connection not just incidental walking down the street hey what are you guys doing what are you, but you know this is a, a good step to to have these conversations but you know it now is the more information that we can gather and 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 eventually yes rob it, it does have to focus to to some leadership and and essentially um really when we come down to if it gets to a point where there is um something happening and something is going to manifest in that in that building that that's going to take some some leadership some someone's got to take the hold of that it's not going to just be a well um okay now the town owns this building let's see who wants to do something you know if something's if we're going to take this action we really need to have a clear um view of of who's going to take that ball and run with it and, and what that ball is you know and that and that entity will evolve when there's a firmer idea of what that repurpose is going to be. That entity will emerge. Right now, we're essentially a steering committee and we're working with two uh, boards, you know, and all we want is to work in partnership with transparency so that we're all informed. And And I am glad to hear what Patty said, very glad to hear. Uh, and I, I hope in the future that, you know, those kinds of loops of information are are shared so but this is a mammoth job it is huge it really job. is i mean it's um and and it, it it touches on so many different sensitive areas um and and any of a number of them can sink the ship so yeah. um so um the um catherine you've been talking about the grant money that's out there for feasibility studies and such and it's um I mean, why not start applying for some of that? I mean, it is just will be giving us more information. It doesn't, you know, um, is that premature or is that worth the, worth um, trying to to get some of that? I mean, I'm I'm not a big fan of of the endless engineering studies that spend all the money for a project on the study and then nothing gets done. I've seen that happen. A lot, but in, in this situation, maybe there is some some monies out there for the you know the development of the this unfolding of this idea, Robert. Uh, yes, I I believe the money, I believe there would be money available, and I think we would have to do it through the town. And the types of things that the the early stage feasibility include getting uh, input from the the from the town members. Right, so I mean, they're doing surveys and and uh, strategizing on how how to get the best input and funding more focus groups and things like that. So, uh, but we need to have at least the commitment from the town that if we can pursue the finding these grants, that the town would want to go down that road. Do we have that sort of? Right, or, and we also would like to to pull in the you know, the regional and, and um, state uh, stakeholders, uh, because that's important that they're also at the table uh, with a project to the size of this. So it's, you know, it, it is important that it, we, we understand that the town, you know, in its current um, d uh, demographic uh, is, is limited, but we're thinking so of something that will have a more regional um aspect to it and we're hoping that you know as this project uh, 
if it can be realized, that it will actually help to be an economic driver for the town and pull more people into the town. I mean, things are happening in Rochester. I, I know that we talk about the shrinking population, but I also see so many indicators of growth and, and it makes me feel quite optimistic for what our future looks like. And so this is an opportunity to, you know, build towards that future. So if you wanted to go in for a visibility grant from whoever, who is the agent that's asking for the grant, the town? And if it's the town, then the select board has to be integrally involved in that in the process of uh, developing that grant proposal, I think. I don't know if we can ask for a feasibility study on a property we don't own. That would the, These folks that do it um, would answer that question for us is, is we could probably do it, but we would just need to have like a permission from the school board saying that they can enter the building. Um, we're also having a walk through uh, sometime in October with the supervisory union and they are bringing in a gentleman from up around the Burlington area that has uh, been involved in a few of these school repurposing building things and um, we were invited to join in on that walkthrough sometime in October. Um, we can make that, um, you know, open to a, a couple of the committee members too. That would be great. Yeah, I so also, I also yeah. want to mention that um, we've got Jeff Gephardt um, uh, on our energy coordinator he's our energy coordinator and um he has a wealth of information um if he's not already uh involved with well we've got jeff gebhardt too so you didn't <laughs> I, I take it you didn't read the the, the, the report because it's uh, share it, jeff. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, as long as you're happy jeff <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would think one thing that would be important to do if we're going to do much of anything is to work a little bit closer with fixing some of the maintenance issues of the building and so that if it does come to the point where the town has to possess the property that some of these things are addressed because they're things that will need to be addressed regardless of what happens to the building and and i think that's kind of an immediate thing as far as the functionality that's going to happen down the road, regardless of what it's used for, um, some of these things are going to need to be addressed. One thing that concerns me um, with the whole project would be we would probably have to jump onto the town septic, I would say, with the change of use that it would happen there if we did do the high school or even the elementary school no matter what building is used involved, it's going to require a change of use and a change of septic, I would say, that may not be permitted to have its own function. And also addressing the, the buried oil tanks, those, those kinds of things are things we probably should be looking at now rather than wait to see what kind of grants we could get for studying what kind of purpose for the building but maybe there might be some energy grants that we could get of repairing the maintenance issues that we have there and maybe looking at uh, long-term issues like maybe some solar power or, or just something to that point, yeah. I'm thinking. There, there are grants um, for the Undertown tanks and I've written a few myself for residential people, uh, but definitely, you know, we plan to pursue all those all those kind of line item issues that would affect any ownership and what can be done now and what can be done later. But it would be helpful to know the the criteria or the aspects of importance that you know that uh, Patty and you and and Dune have listed already, so that we can incorporate those concerns in what we're doing. I mean, if we are able to do a feasibility study. Uh, which would be great. We would have to do it in partnership between yeah. the boards. Because right now we, you know, it's not it's not our building. That's right. Yeah. But if that, but if that, if there is an intent to acquire that building, then there has to be a partnership. Now I don't know whether 
you know, Robert is suggesting that there be some sort of a, a executive committee that has membership from all three boards, because I can't imagine that we're going to take this much time at select board meetings, but there's going to be work that has to take place. And there's got to be people with that represent these two groups on officially on that, that report back to their groups. I mean, you can't expect everybody to be involved with every information processing there is. It's just too much time. Yes. And so you have to have a, a, a group focused on that. Uh, Robert, Mayor, you want to say something? Uh, I just wanted to, to mention that to Frank, I'm not sure if you've, have you studied the, the uh, engineering report that was done for the school? It has an extensive fixed list uh, and that, in, in fact, what part of what started this is we were looking to gain access to the school to review, uh, you know, so for myself to review the electrical situation to see if there was um, uh, how how extensive the that particular fix had to be made. So I mean, these are the, all subjects that we're looking at, um, and uh, uh, we're step by step going through and planning for as far as maintenance. I'm impressed with how pragmatic uh, the select board seems to be, Frank and Patty, and how more blue sky the committee team se seems to be. And, and I mean, that's diff different styles of looking at information. And there needs to be some way to kind of bring these together because the foundation of the pragma pragmatic concerns of the town can't afford to do it, costs 40 grand a year to heat the place. There's a gigantic amount of maintenance that's been deferred. These are all real things. And then those all have to be addressed, addressed in some real world way before these other things can be uh, realized. Uh, although they really kind of need to happen at the same time. It's very complicated. Uh, but I really, I come back to this thing and it, <clears throat> I feel like we have different points of view uh, that need to somehow be brought together in a, in a clearer consensus of, of these different power centers, the school board, the, the committee, and the uh, select board. I have a question. This is Burma. Um, I think Rob is talking about a coordinator, someone who coordinates these three entities, which would be a good idea. And I also have a question about the town vote. Wouldn't the town need to vote on the purchase of the building? Wouldn't that have to come in March? Just a question. No, um, we, you voted on that when you voted for the merger. So part of the language of the merger was that the transfer of the building, I'd already asked this question myself. Um, the merger, the transfer of the high school building was in, in the merger language and you voted on that when you voted for the merger. So when you voted for the merger, you voted for the transfer of the building to take place. Thank you, Patty. Yeah, just following up on uh, Rob's wise suggestion, there needs to be better coordination among the three parties. Um, one way to do that would be to have some small representative group of one or two people from each of the three uh, groups uh, get together and, and put together a work plan and timeline of you know what needs to be done and what sequence and you know, what do we know? What do we need to know? Uh, so that uh, there's coordination and, and knowledge uh, across those three entities about uh, what's happening and how do we get this done the best way. I would, I would put that as a, as a recommendation. Yeah, I, I would be more than happy to be the point of person when, when the time is right for that to take place. Um, some of the, there's two reasons for um, executive sessions and real estate discussing real estate is one of those reasons mm. for a board to go into a session. It's basically because if you're talking about a negotiation, you don't want it to be public so that somebody could offer a different price for a piece of real estate. Um, this is not really the case here because oh. we're buying it for a um, so, you know, the fact that it goes into executive session to discuss real estate matters um, at times may not be necessary in, in this case, because we're not revealing any facts about selling the school that other buyers could jump in on. So um, we probably be a little more public with, with what they're doing. I'm so glad you said that, Patty, because we also have felt that way. What, what's going on here, you know, with executive session? 
So thank you for that. Robert? Uh, I, I had a, a discussion with uh, Ethan on this and pointed out, I mean, certainly the, um, as a purchaser, the, um, the, the town can go into executive session. Um, but I pointed out to Ethan that the statute reads that you can go, you are allowed to go into executive session for a purchase or a lease. That's not what they are doing. I mean, what that's not the situation that they are in. I also pointed out to him that the, the open meeting law states what you are allowed to do, but not it's not that you are required to. Right. So the, and I pointed out to him that there's really nothing at this point. Uh, I mean, there may have been some procedural stuff between their lawyer and, and them originally, but there's really no need to be an executive session that this is really needs to be discussed by the public, the whole public, yeah. even if it's uh, politically in, inconvenient. So I'm for transparency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I tend to agree as well. I would say also that the transparency issue is a big sore point with uh, those in Stockbridge that are hostile to the whole idea of this, the high school existing at all. And, and that's a powerful thing that the school board has to deal with. The reason that they lost their first vote on, the, on their budget was because these angry people in Stockbridge angry about this high school. So it's a, it's a hot button. And every time there's a, there's a perfectly, however reasonable it might be, uh, executive session, the conspiracy mongers uh, are, are cranking over there in Stockbridge. So I just think that's a reality. That mm -hmm. Well, I just I just filled out this. Yeah, go ahead, Burma. That was uh, for yeah, Stockbridge Mary. and the nature and the nature of the questions. I found I found it to be a little confounding and very difficult to uh, relate to. I don't know who set up the questions or the questionnaire, but I don't really understand what they hope to, whoever distributed it and are reading these responses are hoping to achieve. It, it seemed uh, not very productive in my humble opinion. My feeling is that they came at questions from multiple perspectives so that people who were responding we're really examining their position. And the, the results from all of that is what? We haven't gotten the results yet. Okay. No, I think what we were told was that it, it was input for the board. It wasn't determinative in and of itself, but the board wanted more input from the community and, you know, hopefully they'll get a lot of good uh, feedback. But, and they're, and they're ex extending the, uh, the deadline. Oh, okay. Well, um, onward to the fog, huh? <laughs> um, yeah. it's, um... So may we, may we feel confident that uh, if we can go find some feasibility, I mean, in the short term, find some, some feasibility grants that you would be open to um, uh, uh, pursuing those? Yeah, I believe so. I think without a, um, it's really this feasibility is helping to study even making the decision. You know, I, I don't think that it's, um, we can say definitively right now, yes, we want to buy that building. I think the feasibility will show whether even that's, that's the particular building that, that ends up being up for sale. I mean, there's so many, um, so many questions here, but I, I absolutely think that, um, that reaching out for some feasibility study and that can nail down some of these um, gnarly questions that, that we're not gonna be able to root out ourselves in our spare time. If the town decides not to buy the building, what happens to the building? And in, in the merge agreement, it says it reverts back to the school system's property disposition policy, whatever that is. So they, they'd probably auction it off. Right, but we have some years before it gets to that that right. threshold, I understand. Right. Yeah. So I mean it's good that we're digging into this now. Is is it just just 
I've had some discussions and, and voiced my own personal opinion, but my personal opinion is, is that, you know, this, this is a long-term and the fastest we could possibly do, come to a decision is certainly uh, a year and a half because there's certainly no way we can have enough information in the up, upcoming budget preparation process for, you know, in, in the um, fall of this year. Uh, so we're certainly a year away from that, from, from you know, uh, uh, before we can address, you know, uh, address um, the financial aspects of it. So, I mean, the, the, we're really talking about somewhere in the fiscal year of 21, 22, um, uh, um, I actually, yes, 21, 22, before you could possibly make a decision. And that yeah. would be after the five year term on the merger anyway. When it, when is that, when is so, the, when is that term? No, that wouldn't be after that five-year term. Yeah. We're, we're just barely into the third year now. Yeah. Right, but the but the the thing is, is that they can if they if the school is not using the building, they don't have to wait till the end of the five years to sell to sell the building for a dollar. It's if they're not using if it's not being used. <laughs> so the transfer can happen before the end of the five years. But doesn't it? it but the, if if the select board hasn't is not at the place where it's ready to do it, they can't sell it to an outside interest for five years. Isn't that correct? So, yeah. Um, again, <laughs> I'm just really stressing the point that going forward from here, and I'm, I'm very grateful for the select board's time on this subject and for, um, you know, it seems like a unified opinion now that it is time to start really digging into the, the exploration on a larger and, and more in-depth um, means uh, so that we can really figure out what this building means to us and what it means to the community. I may do. So, so I think just from our conversation, it sounds like the, so the, this repurposing committee is interested in a three-way coordination uh, mechanism. And, and uh, uh, it sounds like the select board is too. I think if both of us, uh, uh, would send a letter to our friends at the school board to recommend that we form a three-way working task force or something uh, coordination group. I think uh, that would help create that yeah. mechanism, right? Hey, so. Right. I agree. I mean, you know, we had, we had things in the works in July, but then <laughs> things backed off a little bit because the school board was trying to get school back in session yeah and so they've been a little you know busy with the tents and how is this all going to work sure. so yes it there was a, there's a furlough in this <laughs> point in time and you know we're just keeping our fingers crossed that we keep those kids in any one of those buildings right now yeah. um so that's, uh, please then we, we don't want to be facing a different type of crisis right Vic? yep, yep. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. They're they're putting all their effort into how are the kids functioning in the school and is is this working and what changes they need to be doing. So you know we're we're not abandoning the discussion, but we just gave them a little time to do something a little a sure. little more a little higher priority right now. And we and we still have winter and winter weather and what's right. going to happen with that social distancing. Yeah, because we're not going to keep them outside all winter. No. Nancy, did you have something that you wanted to say? No, it got answered. It got answered. Okay. All right. As a realtor, I'm working really hard to bring families into this valley. Um, mm. uh, I have brought a few more kids in, and, and I think I'm about ready to bring a few more in. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm working towards making this a family-oriented valley. Um, not that I don't like you know, second homeowners or anything like that. But uh, that's what we need right now is more families. And um, I also think as I drive by the library um, and see all of the people parked in front of the library just to use the internet, if those people do end up moving to Vermont, we would have a definite need for incubation space, uh, you know, workspace. 
Um, unfortunately, everybody's signing up with EC Fiber so that they, they won't need an incubator office to go to unless they have screaming kids or something, you know, but that all the good internet, <laughs> yeah. internet has arrived here and that's why we're seeing this influx of people that are working at home. So our town may turn around and, and see a growth spurt and who knows what that will lead us right. to. That would be wonderful. A little bit but the C might be a positive thing. So, um, so moving forward, Pat, you're willing to be the, the point person on the select board for communications with the, the um, repurposing committee and the school board? Certainly, it's part of why I run for select board. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think we've made a little progress here. It's, um, oh, it's been done. Is there um, anything else anybody wants to point out before we uh, move on? I would I would just say that if we're going to look for a feasibility study money, which we should, yeah. Uh, if the town is going to be the recipient of that money, if I were the select board, I would really want to be involved in the process of what that uh, uh, proposal was like. I would want to be. I wouldn't want it to come in the window after it was done. So absolutely. Maybe, maybe this uh, a small task force that we're talking about would help to to solve that. I mean, that's sort of the first thing that could actually be done. That could the question. And the feasibility study might say, oh, you're on a floodplain, forget about it. I mean, we yeah, don't. Right. Um, it's, it's I totally good... agree with you, Rob. Of course, it has to be to working together with this. It has to be. Yeah. Okay. Um, In a month. Thank you all for your, your thoughts and passion and patience um, thank you dune and frank and pat we really appreciate yeah, thank it. you thank you Support uh, and thanks to the select board for for doing this work i really appreciate it uh, uh, it's important well thank you guys keep pushing us along that's all it takes yeah, robert you had something you want to say uh just one ask uh, would it be possible uh, pat to share with the committee the um, list of points that you uh, asked you um, gave to the board the 13 points or 14 points? And technically, um, my point person on the school board is Ethan. Um, and so I did uh, summarize all of that discussion and I can forward that email on to you and Catherine and, and Rick, whoever else. Yeah, I can do that. Thank you. All right. Um, so, Joan, you've been very patient um, taking all this out. What have you got for updates? I know we have a bid opening tomorrow. Is that at one o'clock? Um, that's correct. Yeah, you won't be making any decisions there, but um, right. what's the bid opening for? Yeah. It's, it's for a, a stream alteration repair work on the Mendel property on Route 100 South. It's being funded by uh, USDA NRCS, Natural Resources Conservation Service. And um, are we, is this going to be a virtual bid opening or are we? Yes, yes, it's on Zoom. Okay. And you can have the link in your email there. I sent that All to right. you yep. or this morning, whenever it was. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I don't really have much of an update. I'm still working on the same stuff I was working on last week and the week before that. Um, Things are just moving along slowly, so um, nothing new. Is there any update on obtaining the rest of the funding money from the Bethel Mountain Road project? Uh, yeah, I was working on that this afternoon. Um, no, I have to, I'm about to send them an email. I needed to uh, do a rundown of how much money the town has received and how much we still need to receive. And part of the delay, um, I'm not sure if I told you, I think I did maybe it was a few meetings ago, was that um, early on the process, they put in a request for funding from Federal Highway Administration and it was before they knew how much this project was gonna cost. Mm -hmm. They didn't ask for enough. And so they need to put in a new request, which may have gone in by now, but uh, what I was told about three so by uh, VTrans is that due to COVID and people working remotely in VTrans and other um, departments of the state that uh, they're only allowed to 
submit. I'm not sure exactly how this works, but somehow they're not allowed to submit more than one funding proposal at a time. And so this one was in the queue. So I, I don't know for sure whether it's actually been submitted for a federal highway. And um, the amount that they gave me of $94,000 was a number that didn't sound right to me at all as an additional amount needed. Sound, I thought it was considerably more than the original grant amount. So I just finished uh, my numbers this afternoon and there is indeed a difference between what I think the town uh, still needs and what I believe they say they still owe us. So I'll be uh, dealing with that tomorrow. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it'd be good to put that one to rest. I sure would be. Yeah, really would be. Um, so that's it. Yes. Um, is there any uh, any word from the the state on the tax rate for the school? Do you know, Julie? Julie. Yeah, uh, I have not heard anything today from Brad James. Ooh. So he said, maybe. he said it could be up to Tuesday before I hear anything. So we're we going to be pretty much prepared to send those tax bills out uh, uh, as soon as we find that out. We will need to uh, if the if the amount comes tomorrow, the percentage, um, I'll need to put to put a quick uh, meeting together with you because I think that it still has to be. Um, yeah, you, you will have to um, approve, it. approve it. Correct. And then uh, we're ready to go as soon as uh, with printing and, and um, getting them out, hopefully by Friday. It, does that still allow us to use the October 15th date or do we have to extend that? Is there a 30 day wait period before that? Uh, the bills would have to be 30 days by law. So if we print, um, yeah, see if we print on Thursday, that'll be the 17th and mail out on Friday is what I'm, I'm hoping. So uh, that's the 18th? Uh, 17th for printing. So it'll give us 30 days. So it'll be October 17th would be on the, on the bill. Okay. I guess that'll work all right. Pretty close. Yeah. Saturday. Uh, yep. Saturday. Yep, you're right. That's a Saturday. So you can go either one day before or push it off to Monday. Hmm. 19th isn't going to work. I'd rather go the day before. The 18th? 16th. 16th. We, if we can have a meeting in the morning, we can start printing in the afternoon. If we get our, if we, if we get our percentage on Tuesday, we can start printing. We can start printing uh, Wednesday after a quick meeting. I could do like a Zoom, a quick approval, and yeah. do we have to warn that meeting? I we could do an emergency. I'll warn it tomorrow. We already have a, a meeting warned for tomorrow at one. If you get it earlier on, we could fold it in on the, the bill yeah. opening meeting. Yep, that's a good idea. Yeah, that is recused from that meeting though. Mm -hmm. So you have to invite her after the bid opening. Okay. So I guess we'll keep in touch and see if it does come in in the morning. Yep. Yeah. No. Okay. Excuse me. All right. Um, I think we talked um, enough about the highway tonight already. Um, <laughs> yeah. I. Is there um, anything else we need to talk about for we're going to um, um, adjourn this meeting and go into executive session talking about employee issues? I think not. I think not. Um, thank you all again for joining us. And, um, Thanks, everybody. Good so night. You're just, did you say you're discuss Dune, did you say you're discussing an employee issue in executive session? Yes. Okay, thank you.
And am I correct that the next meeting is on the um, 28th? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, good night. Good night, hey, good night everybody. Yeah. Well, have a good evening all. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.